We open on this neat little town with dinosaurs in it that a kid has made in his basement. Don't you slam that door! And it's quickly made pretty clear that he goes down there to escape from his awful mother and sister. This kid's name is Roy and he's just found in a box of cereal, one of those capsules that you put in water that expands into an animal shape. So he puts it in water just as his mom is making him do the laundry and his sister is being a miniature version of mom. You're not supposed to drink her homemade wine. Wine puts color in my cheeks and you better not squeal. I think I could be a model, don't you? Why, why would you ask that of someone you don't like and who doesn't like you? It's like begging for put downs. Look at me. Don't you think I look like Sybil Shepherd? Who? Did you put mom's red blouse in there? Yeah. Meanwhile, she pours bleach into the wash with mom's blouse in it to get him in trouble for no reason. Mad. You got this bogus town and this dorky train and you never even notice my new sandals. Why would he notice your, God, I hate this girl. It's a stegosaurus. You are so lame. Even without all the shitty things she's doing, just personality-wise, she's the worst. Barbie! Tell Roy to bring up the sun umbrella! Oh god, her name is Barbie. She's as empty-headed as a plastic doll. You're such a flea bite. Anyway, during all this drama, something is happening with the capsule that he put in water. Maybe I am just a flea bite. Think she's a flea bite? You got any more lick em up? Yeah, this is that kind of episode. <laughs> Oh, he's kind of cute. Ah. Apparently drinking causes him to grow. Yeah. I gotta drink to the brink till I hit full size. How big is that? I don't know. Are you the regular prize in a cereal box? Or are you just a special prize? Hey, are we actually gonna get some backstory here? I'm a schlabber. I was dehydrated. Oh. Yeah, that's about my reaction. <laughs> oh well, monsters. I could lick them up an ocean. Are we by the ocean here? No, this is Kansas. Yeah, that's about as far from the ocean as you can get. What you got? So Roy talks about the town he built. There's just dinosaurs in it. No girls, no moms. It includes a train set that he'd gotten from his dad, who is obviously out of the picture for some reason. All aboard! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! <laughs> no, just look at him. See, the dinosaurs like this town all to themselves, and they talk about how good this town is without anybody else in it but them. They can go anywhere they want to, anytime, and no one tells them what to do. Living vicariously through dinosaurs? I get that. Who's that? It's a boy. The dinosaurs like him. What's he doing? He's waiting for his friend. Hmm, I feel like life is imitating art. Too bad that doesn't include the dinosaurs. He doesn't have a friend yet. Mom demands a snack. You got a dad, too? He left. Five years ago. I don't know where he is. So that's what happened to the dad. He probably couldn't take being around he these people. He sends me postcards, though. He sends them to my school so my mom doesn't see them. I was gonna say that it was Always. shitty to leave Roy behind, but maybe the mom is keeping them apart. Do all schlobbers live in cereal boxes? Some of us. You're not gonna leave, are you? I mean, when I get back, you'll be here, right? I was in your cereal box. I guess I'll stick around. Anyway, while Roy is away, Schlobber tries drinking paint. Yucca tart blah! Then he discovers Mom's homemade wine. <coughs> I love that little hop he did. Every summer, all day long, I pick dandelions. You better not drink it. She'd get mad. Yo! Now sister demands a snack. You need to learn to stand up for yourself. Oh no, don't go away. And he literally dives right in. Boy, my boy, let's go outside and see the big wide world. I think he's a little drunk, <laughs> if that's possible. No, I have to stay around the house in case my mom wants me to do something. I didn't even go outside to play. Jeez, this kid really does have it rough. What's that? The washing machine. That was cute how he jumped into What's Roy's that? arms. Well, as much as the puppetry would allow, anyway. Uh, yeah, Mom! Was that Ooh. the washing machine? Uh, now Mom demands her red blouse be taken out of the wash, the one that the sister poured bleach on, so I'm sure that's gonna go well. Anyway, Schlobber gets hidden in the tool closet, but of course he doesn't stay. 
Oh, no! What's wrong? Hi, quick! Reverend Jenkins is coming to take Barbie and me at 6 o'clock to the charity dance. I want you to clean the bathroom with a toothbrush while we're gone. Wow, sure she's not his evil stepmother? Where's my blouse? I told you to put it on a hanger. Why don't you get on your broom and fly away? What did you say? Nothing. Who does your hair? Frederick of Fright Street? Any more smart talk, young man, you'll be licking up the kitchen floor. These insults are technically really lame, but they piss her off, so I guess that's what makes them funny to me. I hope you wear a bag over your head in public. Shut up! Did you tell me to shut up? No. Don't get mad, Mom. What are you holding behind your back? And, oh God, she My discovers blouse. the blouse. Ah, quit picking on the kid, you old bag of wind. Shut up! You think you can talk to your mother like that? Well, think again. I guess he wants the kid to get killed. Every word that comes out of that mouth will cost you. From now on. No! That's one word. Please don't! That's two words. Let me crush one, Mom. Well? Mmm. You ever want to reach through the screen and strangle a character? Or two? Bring me another chocolate pecan sandwich. Me too. Don't worry, Roy. This is gonna stop. God, I hope so. And now Schlauber is encouraging Roy to misbehave to get mom and sister to come back. And stop that noise! I need lick em up. You thirsty? Lick em up makes me strong. And it works. <laughs> I love this little guy. No, you'll just make her madder. Schlauber, hide! Of course, they just see Roy fiddling with a string, and he takes the blame for it. Too big for your britches, young man. Just because you're too big for yours, Lord Bottom. What was that? Was it a big rat? Roy Haverston Edward Barton. Do you have a puppy down here? How are they this dumb? Yes, it's a talking rat or a talking puppy, you idiots. That's the logical conclusion. You want me to pluck out... The hairs on your puppy one by one? And then use them to make a coat? It's my friend, Schlobber. You don't have any friends. It's a puppy. Okay, now it makes sense to think that, somewhat. You are going to clean out the garage twice a week, wash the car every day, make my coffee, dial my telephone calls, smile at Reverend Jenkins, and hand pick up every piece of lint off the living room carpet. On top of everything else, she's taken away his town. I'm the boss around here! Row, 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 row. Now you stay put while I take care of your doggy. And thank God it's not a real puppy. I don't even want to think about that. And of course she's going after him with water. Awesome. Take that, little puppy! <laughs> don't do that! Oh! This kid isn't much smarter than they are. Slobber? Are you all right? Barbie. Open the door and see if there's any rough roughs left in Little Rover. <laughs> nice. Who's in there? He's a schlobber. And he's my friend. My son does not have friends over. Now beat it. Try and make me. God, how do they still not get it? And here he comes. Hi. Nice again. We figure Slobber hit his full size when Mom was spraying him. He still drinks a lot, but he doesn't seem to be growing anymore. I'd better keep him away from the wine. The kid in the town's friend finally showed up. And in this context, he kind of looks like a dinosaur. I think I got a really good friend. All aboard! Okay, that's kind of a lame revenge, but I'll take it. And so ends Mr. Schlobber. This was a very simple but fun episode. 
Once you realize that this kid, despite being a boy, is basically Cinderella, Schlobber being the fairy godmother, it, it gives it a bit extra dimension. And as I mentioned, I think the little puppet was really cute and had a lot of personality. Even when he got big and grotesque, he was still kind of cute in a way. This episode reminds me a lot of Parents from Space. It's about a kid with an abusive family who effectively gets rescued by the monster of the week. This one is a lot less dark, though. The mother and sister are horrible, but there aren't any obvious signs of physical abuse. And of course, no one dies. But both end with the kid being happy with their new friend or friends. I'm almost surprised it didn't share a writer or director with that episode, with the similarities in how some writers and directors tend to return. Speaking of which, it was written by Julie Selbo, who also wrote All in a Day's Work and Satan in the Suburbs. All three of these episodes are cute and have a silliness to them, but I'd say those first two were better, unfortunately, since this was her last writing effort on this show. She also wrote eight episodes of Tales from the Dark Side. As for the director, it was Warner Shook, who also directed Satan in the Suburbs, and this is also his last effort on this show. If Roy looks familiar, he was played by Robert Olivery, who you probably know as Kevin from Edward Scissorhands or Nick from the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids movies. The mom was played by Kate McGregor Stewart, who is a character actor and was also in uh, Tales from the Dark Side. Maybe I should just cover that damn show. I'm kidding, don't ask me to cover it. Schlobber was voiced by Rockets Red Glare. I've no idea who that is, apparently a character actor and stand-up comedian, but that's the best actor name we've gotten on this show since Black Eyed Susan and Meatloaf. I guess that's about all I have to say about this one. It's not one of the best, but it's a really cute episode with a neat looking monster and a good kid actor. What more do you need, really? Next up is Perchance to Dream. See you then. This is Kansas. Just my luck. I'm sorry. Not your trip up. Chance you take when you travel in cereal boxes. <laughs>